How do you go from this to this to that to that as well to this, even this, and get this? What? Welcome everyone to Cinema Spotlight. Diving into Peter Jackson's career, we will be talking about The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. When the One Ring, a power created by the Dark Lord Sauron that has been lost for centuries, ends up in the hands of Frodo, a hobbit, standing about three feet, six inches tall, what she said, sets out on a quest to take the One Ring to Rivendell, a home to elves. Gandalf the Grey, a wizard of Middle-earth, seeks to help Frodo between learning the dangers Frodo will face and accompanying him on this quest. You shall not pass! That, that, that happens later. Later on in the film, once Frodo reaches Rivendell, the characters surrounding Frodo realize that the One Ring cannot stay at Rivendell and has to be destroyed. With that, a fellowship is formed of nine companions. Four hobbits, Frodo, Sam, Merry, Pippin, two men, Aragorn and Boromir, Gandalf himself, an elf, Legolas, he's very good at archery, which I would... Archery! Archery! This isn't brave. Yeah. And then there's Gimli, a dwarf. <laughs> it's a bunch of guys that is going from one place to destroy this ring because a really bad lord wants it and wants to rule the world if he does. Pretty basic, right? You might be asking, how in the hell is such a simple plot three hours long for each film? Why couldn't it just be one film where it goes like... Hello. Excuse me. Down here. I can take the ring. And I know the way. Not a chance. It all seems clear to me that I should be the one to take the ring to Mordor. I am the quickest and the stealthiest. That is the clear choice. I'll take that ring now. There you go. Was I not supposed to touch it? I don't think I'm supposed to touch it. Oh, okay. I'm going home. I don't even know where home is! I'm going through conflicts. With a lower quality camera. To show grittiness and... and... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Where'd that ring go? Uh-oh. <laughs> I found it, and I have made it to where I need to be so conveniently and very contrivedly. And God, it is really hot in here. But yeah, somehow my hair looks better in these conditions when I'm in a volcano. Um, okay, well, we're gonna stop talking now. And how is the camera quality even better? Doesn't matter. Anyway, hope you had a great time. This is the end of the movie. I'm afraid that the films are interested in far more than just making the plot simple, and the journey only worth one film. What makes these three movies three-hour epics is the world, Middle-earth itself. It's because of what the One Ring does to people of Middle-earth. Objects within this film have powers that 
doesn't just apply to rings. Rings hold a considerable amount of power within this world, and this one ring has an abundance of influence to those who possess it. There is so much more history and lore than just that, and there are hundreds of people out there that know quite a bit more than me. But I'm just keeping it simple. Since the One Ring has been created by Sauron, a, who ruled Mordor, and wished to rule over the entirety of Middle-earth, there is a considerable amount of desperation to destroy this ring because it's attached to Sauron. Sauron being the main antagonist, he's an ever-constant presence as this great flaming eye. I see. His life force is tied to this ring, and it has a chance to come back if the ring reunites with him. The One Ring is a nasty problem in of itself. If the constant threat of Sauron wasn't enough, this ring can influence people in the most subtlest of ways, and in some cases, pretty obviously. Men primarily falling to its influence, bringing unnatural long life, it corrupts your mind, body, and soul. It's so powerful that even immortal beings and powerful ones dare not wield it for themselves because it will create something far worse, maybe even worse than Sauron. This world is vast and holds all types of races, species of creatures, and beings alike. They live here and they are affected by this One Ring and Sauron who created it. The One Ring can be only destroyed in the place where it was created, so which means our characters have to cross into lands they're not supposed to, they encounter dangers, they take refuge in places of other characters who have different desires. What do you want? It's dangerous to go and love. Take this. This awakens story arcs in certain characters like Aragorn to rise to the occasion and fulfill his purpose he himself was afraid to do. Aragorn being heir to the throne of Gondor, Gondor is a place described as the greatest realm of men, but it's ruled by stewards, not kings. Who be ye? Uh, pants on my shoulders and I'm grumpy. I am heir to a very important person who is a king, and that means, if I ever embrace my own arc, I'm gonna be king! Not on my watch. You have no claim here. Yes, I do. Have at ye! You have a stick for a sword. It's not even real. Well, it's not a stick, but, I mean, it's a nerf sword. I mean, might as well be. My girlfriend gave it to me, all right? It was it was very sweet of her. Nerf swords are cool. Peter Jackson, who directed these films, made this look easy, though it was no mean feat. A lot of prep time went into this, and you can see it. Impressive in every single shot. There was a technique to everything that you could see right in front of you. I don't think a lot of people will agree with me when I say this, but upon traveling back to this film and watching it for the first time in maybe a year, I gotta say, this movie has a pretty brisk pace. Three hours, and this movie moves pretty fast. Don't believe me? Let's break it down. Seven minutes we get into this, and we have everything we need to know on the surface of what this ring does and who Sauron is. We get a brief battle, who was involved, what happened, and what transpired from there. We are then introduced to Bilbo, who obtains the ring, and therefore we have the course of the two and a half thousand years which is narrated. 35 minutes into the film, including those seven minutes, we are introduced to the main players of this film with more than just, just them, the rest will show up later. We are introduced to Frodo, Sam, Merry, Pippin, and Gandalf. Gandalf sets out to find out what this ring is all about and returns to tell Frodo that it's the One Ring. Everything becomes sudden enough to know that Frodo has to set out and keep this ring from the enemy that is now hunting for him, the Nazgul. Just shy of an hour, Aragorn is introduced. Merry and Pippin joined earlier and things get dark pretty fast, seeing how the hobbits are clearly in over their heads. Without giving too much more away, I'll just tell you this. An hour and 32 minutes in, the Fellowship is formed, introducing us 
to the rest of the key players that you will watch for the rest of this film. In one hour and 30 minutes, all this happens without a second wasted. Telling big portions of the mythology throughout its time and introducing key characters that move the plot along never slowing down. You may not be as attached to the characters as you think you should be, but they all work out just enough. Bottom line is this film is out of the entire trilogy is my absolute favorite. The movie took me to a whole new level where I, I felt not only invited into this world but felt a part of it. The last 17 minutes of this film emotionally compromises me. It's some of the finest storytelling I will ever see. Between the members of the fellowship who they've lost or have to get back and understanding the purpose of each individual can be dissected, understood, and still have have an emotional pull even to this day. Granted, no one is crying like I am, but the end does really resonate. In the end, guys and gals, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring is my absolute favorite of the trilogy. That's not to say I didn't love the other two any less, but we'll talk about them in the next two reviews. The filmmaking is astounding. The mystical lands of Middle-earth is exquisite, inviting, and sometimes intimidating and scary. This has a brisk pace with no intent to boast on how well it's made and it's made for our viewing pleasure so it tells a story that takes three films and this is just the freaking start it appeases my eyeballs what she said i will give the lord of the rings the fellowship of the ring god tier and would own on 4k all right, everyone, stay tuned for this Lord of the Rings extravaganza. What I plan to do here is review each film theatrically and then review the extended editions. I'll go far more in depth of, in detail with my favorite scenes, what scenes I felt like I should have been left in the theatrical cut, and hopefully whatever else I can think of. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you can like, share, and subscribe, that would be fantastic. You all have yourself a wonderful day. you die. That being said, have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys next month.